direct human affairs through his or her horns. It's also interesting that you know, the, the descriptions of the Chittahuli um, with the, the horns and the, sometimes the tail and stuff is very, very close to how uh, Christians and uh, those sort of stories have depicted the devil. Yes, sir. And one thing that interests me is this, that depictions of the devil have, have subtly changed over the centuries. But there is a difference now. First, originally, the devil was depicted as a hook, hook-nosed creature, like a caricature of a North African moor. That was at the time when the Europeans were fighting the Moors as well as the Ara Arabs during the Crusades. Many depictions of the devil then show the devil as having a hooked nose. And then later, somewhere in the 19th century AD, the devil was depicted as an African with a snub nose, thick lips, and very dark skin. But what amazes me is that now, more than ever before, the devil is represented as a Chitauli. What, what concerns me, sir, is this, that these alien creatures, are now about to reveal themselves. And they are making us aware of how they look like. If you look, for example, at, at uh, bioscope films, which were made in the 1950s, the 30s, and, and so on, depictions of space aliens of that time are ridiculous very laughable, but not anymore, sir. Today, we are having films that depict the grey aliens exactly as they really are, and the Chitauli exactly as they really are. My question is why? Are we being prepared for a major event? And let me share this with you. The group of American people who came to visit me a week or so ago and who left a rather unveiled threat about me shutting up or else my wife will die, who warned me about a certain creature called Eleazar or Melchizedek, that this creature is watching me. These people say, said this, that on Lake Titicaca there is a hidden beam of light coming from the sky onto the surface of that South American lake and that on the 9th of September 1999 something very interesting is going to happen at Titicac. Now, I'm interested to know what this is. Well, I know from my own travels to that area that um, there are endless sightings of uh, craft and, and beings in that area. I've been there twice myself. And I, I, I do think, from again, from my own research, Credo, that um, we are being prepared for these uh, beings to openly... Um, be seen. And being prepared this way, sir, we, when we do see the, the nasties, we are not going to react to them with the fear that we would otherwise have reacted. Mm -hmm. Because now what, what game is someone playing? I think, sir, that they are playing the game that whoever they are, that we should accept these beings and welcome them with open arms mm -hmm. and make them 
our masters are yet again. You see, sir, there has been a steady build-up in books, in children's comics, and in other things of the fact that we must accept these creatures. It started with the, with the film E.T., where a cute little alien creature got lost on Earth and fought hard to be accepted by human beings. I think the same thing is on the cards here. The question is why? The, one other thing I would just like to raise before we move into the, the, the bloodlines and their yes. connection to the Illuminati is one thing that keeps coming up in, in my work is that some of these um, Chittahuli, these reptilians, um, at a high level of their hierarchy are actually white. Have you come across that? Yes. They are not white like white people. If you take, if you take white cardboard and you soak it in dirty water, that is the color you will get. That is the color of the chitaul. And wait, sir, let us think carefully about this. According to African storytellers, the Chitauli have got cold blood. They feel cold very quickly. And where they dwell under the earth, where the great sun god banished them, they dwell there surrounded by great fires because their blood is cold. They freeze eternally. And so if you come across them in, K, in their caves, there are many, many cooking fires lit there. That's interesting, with the symbolism of the devil mm -hmm. being in the fires of hell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And there is another thing. The, the, the Chitauli, they, their eyes, terrible as they are, are so efficient that if a chitauli appears suddenly into the hot African sunlight, two things happen to him. His skin dries and blisters, and he goes totally blind. In fact, sir, there have been a strange race of aliens which have been seen in Africa, even by white people, which I think are actually Chitauli. When you, that you run and the thing chases you, it stops immediately when a car's headlights hit it and it becomes blind. Another thing, sir, we are told amongst our people that a Sangoma must always have a bogo. This is a sharpened wooden stick which he or she must carry at night. We are told that a sharpened stick is the only weapon by which you can kill a Chitao. Well, of course, again and again as you speak, uh, what comes to mind is the story of Dracula, Count Dracula, the stake in the heart, the blood drinker, the, the blood drinking, uh, which is precisely uh, what this uh, Chittahuli and their crossbreed seem to be into. But, sir, it is not just any wood that you must use against a Chittahuli. We believe that Rhodesian teak a wood which has got a strange bitter taste is the one type of wood that is poisonous to the chitaul. And down there, you see a long stick that I am carving in preparation for the year 2000. I might not be alive to see the year 2012, but 